So I'm back and uh, here we are. It's March the 4th and we've been working on a cello that unfortunately got run over uh, by a vehicle and the piece was destroyed and it was crumbled into 10 different pieces and um, it was just a very tragic accident. It was nobody's fault, but the luckily the piece was covered by the soft case, and so we were able to retrieve all the pieces. And uh, like a puzzle, we put it back together. The uh, the actual uh, project began last Tuesday, so it's been about eight days. Now, if you'd have asked me eight days ago if I would be here making a video on the importance of bridges and different methods of creating the bridges, crafting them, and the use of the bridge, um, I would have told you that you are crazy, insane, and uh, and need to get your head checked. But uh, actually, this has been a great experience. So that when uh, when we lost the cello, uh, I decided to seize that moment and and embrace that opportunity of of uh, sadness and. Uh, disappointment and create a lesson for my daughters to learn that not always a tragedy should be viewed as a negative sometimes they can be positive especially when it concerns inanimate objects things that we can replace so we uh, we decided we were going to take the uh, cello pieces and put it all back together and we have We've done a great job of uh, redoing everything. The girls have, have been very much involved in all of the process. But as you can see, there was pieces broken everywhere. And it's been kind of fused together with bits of uh, a plastic uh, wood putty uh, specialized for guitars and, and for instruments. So the final process will be painting the piece. But in the process of uh, of doing all of this i was uh i was challenged by the presence of a broken bridge and i said well maybe we can fix it so in the beginning i started tampering with the the uh toying with the possibility of of altering the wood ones and then uh, I was uh, I was advised by my nephew, who told me to use ivory. That ivory was used very uh, successfully in the manufacturing of bridges for guitars and classical guitars, etc. So I used that concept and and having been fortunate enough to to have a stockpile of some micarta material some micarta ivory that was left to me by a friend um, I was able to manufacture my first bridge for my daughter Tiffany Claire who's a violinist and her violin uh, bridge was collapsed and bent and warped as you can see this was her old bridge, and um, she was told that her uh, her uh, fingerboard was collapsing. So we determined that that was not the case; that it was just the bridge that was way too tall, and it was way out of proportion to the instrument it was put on backwards. So obviously, it was not it was not uh, installed properly. So we built this beautiful bridge, and uh, we showed it in another video for the girls to always have a record of that. And then uh, I moved on to crafting a uh, bridge for this cello, for this or another cello that we that we have acquired since. So this cello, this bridge actually, is began began by. Uh, by first we 
sliced the micarta into pieces uh, having set out a pattern of approximately the size and then with an ink pen going in and drawing the drawing cutting out the square and then cut actually slicing it in half like a piece of bread and cutting two pieces with an angle in it and then I was uh, I was able to take that pattern and use a protractor and a compass to to get all of my reference points and make a series of holes that would later be the pattern for the design so this is how the holes began this is a piece uh, that I used for this bridge that I created and the actual hole pattern is um, is later pierced all of the design work is cut out by the jeweler's saw and this makes it possible for us to have created this beautiful piece this is an micarta ivory bridge with the uh, with all of the dimensions uh, precise to the the distance of the cello um, the sound board uh, the uh, fingerboard now it's very important uh, several several important key points to always remember when doing this uh, that I learned that this this shape here is correspondent to the shape of the fingerboard so the fingerboard has to fit the shape of the bridge or the bridge has to fit the shape of the fingerboard rather and this is to keep the distance of the strings on the on the fingerboard properly spaced and uh, and properly uh, distanced from the fingerboard so that the pressures don't alter and change from string to string so that's one key important point the second and probably the most important point is the base of the bridge must always seat perfectly perfectly flush with the instrument uh, that that is achieved real it's a very tricky process uh, one that I kind of uh, have improvised and invented along the way because I had to and that uh, that will determine the transfer of the sound from the strings through the body of the bridge into the um, the chamber of the violin or the cello or any of the stringed instruments and probably just as important I believe is the seating of the strings the strings should be seated in half round uh, perfectly cut diameters of the actual string itself uh, rather than just filing a V like most of the installers would do I believe that uh, that leaving air between the string and the bridge is an error I think that uh, the transfer of sound is more uh, uh, is more precise when the string fits perfectly against the bridge so those are critical points um, that I've determined now you, as you can see the piece is very ornate uh, and I guess that just comes with creativity you could probably make it just as blank as you wanted to and it would function just as well but that is determined by whoever's crafting the piece so that is certainly um, an option and I think uh, I think we're done with this piece we're ready to start the sanding process to install it and uh, and we're real excited to hear the final sound after we finish painting this piece we'll make a video and let you hear what it sounded like when it was finished but um, it's been a learning process and we've learned a lot and especially we've learned that uh, everything is possible and the girls have learned never to give up on uh, on anything just uh, try it and the error if you make mistakes well that's a wealth of uh, of opportunity mistakes are always good because from mistakes come successes and uh, and perfection and so we leave you with that 
Have a beautiful day, and we'll talk to you soon.